makakalikasang pagbati sa ating mga taga-sunod dito sa ating programang Laudato Si and Care for our Common Home. Ito tayo ngayon ay uh, masaya sa episode na ito dahil patuloy tayong magpapalaganap, magpapakilala at mag-aaral paano ba tayo mamuhay sa ating nag-iisang tahanan. Sabi nga sa season of creation, ang ating team ay uh, a home for all. No? So, renewing the oikos of God. Pero sino ba ang nandito sa home na ito? No? Where, what is our role in this home? Kaya ito yung ating uh, palalaganapin ngayon. And of course, Siyempre, papakilala po muna tayo. Ako po si Ati Lu Arsenio, ang coordinator ng Arts Diocese of Manila Ministry and Ecology. At um, ako ang host at may co-host din po ako sa programang ito. Kaya pabati na natin. Hello, Rodney. Hello, Tito Lu. Isang makakalikasang araw po sa ating lahat at uh, siyempre sa ating mga katahan narito naman po tayo ngayong linggo uh, ngayong linggong gabi uh, sabi ko nga araw no, kasi may mga nanonood sa atin sa YouTube at sa Facebook at siyempre sa Faith Watch app mm-hmm. na dapat po ninyong i-download sa iOS at sa uh, ano nga itong isa <laughs> Android ano uh, makakalikasan na uh, uh, makakalikasan uh, uh, pagbati po sa ating lahat at kami natutuwa dahil very excited po tayo ngayon, kami ni Tita Lu, uh, parang magkakatotoy yung sinasabi natin intergenerational ang magyayaring pag-uusap natin at kwentuhan, Tita Lu. Kaya binabati ko mm-hmm. ang lahat, mga katahanan, hashtag katahanan dito sa ating uh, episode na ito ng Laudato si On Care for Our Common Home, Tita Lu. Ako po pala si Rodney, kaling siya, nandiging Laudato si Philippines. Nakalimutan ko mga katahanan, kaya... Okay, okay lang yan. <laughs> okay lang yun, no? So, anyway, ganun talaga minsan-minsan, no? At uh, salamat, Rodney. At at least, no, at tayo ngayon ay patuloy ng magpapalaot. At of course, Rodney, meron tayong guest na nag-iisang guest natin ngayon. No? Kung nakaraang linggo na ating uh, episode, ang ating uh, guest ay tatlong kaparean na Salisiano, no kung saan pinaliwa, paniliwanag nila paano sila tumutugon sa Laudato Si Action uh, Plan and uh, Laudato Si Goals ni Pope Francis no kaya ngayon naman uh, isang kabataan at nag-iisa siya ngayon na tutugon sa atin at magpapaliwanag at hihikayat awkwardly hindi naman siya nag-iisa ng kabataan pero marami pong well hindi ganoon karami pa mga kabataan natin kaya gusto natin yung mga kabataan ang manguna, kayang-kaya yon, di ba Rodney? Pakilala yes. mo na yung ating uh, guest okay ngayon. Po. Tita, at uh, mga katahanan, sabi nga ni Pope Francis sa Laudatus number 13, Young people demand change. They wonder how anyone can claim to be building a better future without thinking of the environmental crisis and the sufferings of the excluded. At syempre, sabi nga, Climate is a common good. It belongs to all. Eh, ito yung intergenerational. Kaya, mga katahanan, palakpakan po ng virtual ang ating panauhin ngayon mula po sa Samar. Ano na ako sa Samar pala ito nang galing sa Eastern Samar. Narito po ang isang climate leader, uh, youth, uh, climate leader and activist. And uh, syempre, ako isang registered social worker. Narito po si Marinel Sumook Ubaldo. Thank you so much, sir. Yan. Thank you po for inviting me. Welcome. Oh, welcome Ayan, Marinel. Marinel. Oh. Ah, Tita Lu, naalala mo, magka- magkakasama-sama nga pala tayo noon, ano, noong 2019. Ah, yes. Doon sa Calzada, doon sa Espanya. Hindi po doon sa Espanya. Oh, diba? <laughs> doon sa Madrid. Sa Madrid. Oh. At nakita namin, uy, mukhang familiar yung nakita natin mga placards na uh, kinikiri no, doon sa Uh, sa ano na binita sa kalsada doon sa Madrid at tapos si Marinel pala iyon at eto magkukuwento dito si Marinel sa atin kung bakit nga ba nakita natin yung kanyang mukha doon nakita natin yung mukha niya kung nagkaroon ng concert sino yung nagkaroon ng concert Marinel at nakita yung mga kababaihan ng mga Pilipina uh, sino yun? ay yung YouTube ang YouTube ang YouTube 
Ay, ang kwento na ang kwento niya, ano, Tito Lu? Sige, pakilala mo na si Marinel, no? Um, ano ba yung kanyang kwento ng kanyang paki, pag, uh, pakikilahok na ito at bakit siya uh, na-inspire para bilang kabataan kumilos, no? Kasi alam natin habang kahit nag-aaral pa siya, eh, nandiyan na siya sa talagang nagsisikap na siya. Ano bang nangyari, Marinel? Kahit mm-hmm. pakikwento naman, sige. Kasi si Marinel po, tita, ay advocacy officer din po ng Living Laudato si Philippines, oh. Ecological Justice and uh, uh, Youth, no? Uh, sa youth campaign. Kaya, Marinel, mm-hmm. tell us something, uh, uh, where, where, where do you come from? Ano yung kwento mo? Bakit mm-hmm. hanggang ngayon ay tumatayo ka, isa kang registered social worker? Ano ang kwento mo? Thank you so much po for that, Sir Rodney and Titalo. Um, so, nagsimula po ako noong 2012. Nung natrain po ako bilang isang um, youth leader at youth animator. So, by a youth leader, parang you're being capacitated also to facilitate um, communities and schools to talk about the basics of climate change. So, at that time po, nag-visit na kami ng mga remote communities at nakakausap na namin sila. Alam na namin yung mga issues na finiface nila um, na related sa climate um, disasters. Tapos noong 2013, um, dumating yung Super Typhoon Haiyan. At that time, noong 2012, palagi kong sinasabi na kung wala tayong gagawin ngayon, um, in the near future, but by, by, by near future, what I mean is like 50 years or 100 years, ito yung mangyayari sa atin. Parang ganun pa namin yeah. na-perceive yung climate change at that time. Yeah. But with Super Typhoon Haiyan happened, um, para kaming nagulat lahat eh. Kasi... Nawalan kami, literally we went back to zero. Our house was washed out. Our community was so devastated. For three to five days, we were isolated kasi akala ng mga tao, wala ng tao doon sa area namin kasi we are facing the Pacific Ocean. And we're the first um commun- parang first town kami na nahit ng Super Typhoon Haiyan before siya nang landfall again sa Tacloban. So a lot of our relatives were actually already offering prayers na for us kasi akala nila patay na kaming lahat. Up until merong isang American um American na helicopter na nagpass by lang sa area namin at nakita nila na merong pang mga tao doon. Doon lang kami nabigyan ng hmm. help at that time. For three to five days, we were literally wet and cold. We don't, we didn't have any anything to eat, anything to drink, any any shelter. And then um, a lot of people, parang lahat na ginagawa yung best nila. We cannot even cross kasi yung land, yung yung parang daan namin is na block ng mga rocks coming from the mountains at hindi din pwedeng mag-cross via sea kasi ang laki pa ng alan at that time at ang dami-daming mga patay na body na nag-float lang sa sa ocean. So at that time we were really helpless and my father was saying at his 59 years of existence it was the first time that he actually experienced a, uh, that kind of typhoon and a lot of people was yeah. skeptical at that time na merong isang ganyang napakalaking typhoon. Meron mga mga tao na parang nagpupustahan pa kung magla-landfall ba talaga. Kasi ang ganda uh-huh. ng araw, ang ganda ng ang ganda, uh-huh. ang ganda ng araw at before mag mag-landfall ang super typhoon na 'yan. At uh-huh. nakita na lang namin na napakadaming patay. Um, nakita ko kung paano mag-struggle kami during the typhoon kasi nagkaroon pa ng earthquake. Hindi namin alam kung mabubuhay mm. kami at the time. And we have three children, three babies with us, yung mga pamangkin ko. Tapos uh, naisip ko, after after I volunteered with a lot of organization, repacking relief goods, um, meron kami din um, children's association at that time who, are, um, who is always coordinating with our local government unit, ano yung mga kailangan ng mga bata, and also with other organizations like Plan International and other organizations. Doon ko na-realize na hindi siya normal eh. Parang this is, this is something na hindi ko gusto ma-experience ulit. So dumating yung time, in 2015, I have been given the opportunity to be um, a protagonist of a film. Doon ko na-realize na um, hindi lang dapat uh, andun na kami sa community eh palagi na namin ginagawa yung yung community 
parang awareness of what is climate change. Maybe this mm. is now the time that we step up and lobby with the government. Kasi kailangan na namin makipag-usap so that um, when a super typhoon comes again, parang hindi na namin may experience yung vulnerability na na-experience namin before. Kasi ayaw, ayaw ko na na makita na ganun pa rin kami. Imagine... Mm. Almost eight years after Hayan, hindi pa rin natin alam kung nakarecover ba talaga yung mga families na na-relocate or andun pa rin sa mga areas na um, kinalalagyan nila nung super typhoon Hayan. So, doon na ako parang nag-start and nabigyan ng oportunidad na makapag-share ng stories ng communities ko in the international and national level. So it was okay. really parang mm-hmm. yung super typhoon Hayan was like an enlightenment na hindi na lang siya, yung climate change hindi siya mangyayari in 50 years or 70 years or 100 years. Nangyayari na siya ngayon at na-face na natin siya ngayon. Okay, so ayan, ano, um, Marinel, yung, yung experience mo ng typhoon Hayan, though, uh, before that, uh, meron ka na rin uh, group na slowly trying to educate people about climate change. Pero tingnan nyo, no? Uh, alam ko, yung inyong lugar, hindi naman first time na nakaka-experience ng typhoon yon, di ba? Yes, Kasi po, parang palaki naman kayong daanan ng typhoon. Yes, Pero po. parang yung mga tao na sanay nung mga typhoon na hindi pa talaga yung super. Mm-mm. At mukhang hindi nila naintindihan, uh, as you shared, hindi nila naintindihan na posibleng mangyari yung nangyari noong 2013. Yes, no? Imagine mo yun, meron pang nagpupustahan. No? Kumusta na kayo yung mga nagpustahan na yon? Buhay pa kaya sila? <laughs> yung no? iba po. Na, yung iba po, hindi pinalad. Hindi pinalad. Okay. And support their families. No? So, para sa mga taga Samar na mga o mga na taga panood din natin. Ano? So, kayo po ba may mga leksyon? sa nangyari ng 2013 no at uh, in, sa buong mundo yan ang uh, usapan pag pinag-uusapan na parang reference pa rin nila no di ba kaya mm-hmm. nga uh, di ba Rod, Rod, uh, Rodney yun pa rin ang reference ng marami no even sa United Nations yung typhoon hayan parang pinakamatindi na nangyari pero after nung matinding nangyari na yan Uh, alam natin hindi lang naman sa Samar yun. Ilang provinces uh, practically ang affected no na ta- grabing devastation. Pero doon sa inyong lugar after that, ano ang mga realization na nakita nyo mula sa mga tao, no? yung mga dating uh, hindi naniniwala sa climate change kasi kasanayan na yung typhoon na dumadaan sa lugar ninyo. Kumusta sila after that kind of incident? Meron bang matatawag natin ecological conversion meron um in my experience po as also a youth leader in our parish a lot oh. of people yung mga hindi nga nagsisimba before naging religious after super typhoon na yan. which is very understandable kasi um oh. nung mga panahon ng super typhoon hayan wala na kaming kinakapitan din ah, kahit ako kahit yung pamilya namin hindi ko alam na magsu-survive ko ang super typhoon hayan at that time lahat kami skeptical din ko ano yung future even me I was a graduating high school student at that time. I don't even know if I can graduate college kasi nawalan din ng livelihood yung parents ko. Yung fa- um, yung father ko is a fisherman and my mother is a danggit de- dealer. I don't know if you know that po, pero a, yes, a boneless yeah, um danggit, yes po. And at the time kah- dahil um almost entirely yung community namin is parang relying on the environment. Nakita na, na, na nila yung change eh. Nagkaroon sila ng parang awareness na nangyayari to at nag, nagkaroon pa ng mas nagkaroon pa ng another strong typhoon after super typhoon na yan. Mm. We were trying to be, rebuild, we were trying to rebuild our houses and another typhoon came and destroyed everything again. And yun yung mm. parang makaka-survive pa ba tayo dito? Anong nangyayari? Kasi lahat ng tao didn't know what what was happening, what's causing um, the strong typhoons. And surprisingly, mm-hmm. Tita Luden po, nung dumating po yung time na nag-research po ako about response and responsibility of the people in the front line, mm-hmm. I have... I have discovered po na a lot of people knew na merong pagkababago sa environment nila because they have this intimate relationship with the environment. However, mm-hmm. they don't know what's causing it. 
And you will be surprised na pag sinabihan mo sila yung climate change po, ang um, yung effect nito is sea level rise, stronger typhoons, extreme weather events. Mag- masasabi nila, ah, kaya pala yung dagat nan- nandyan na sa front yard namin. Eh, ang layo pa nang before. Pero meron na silang ginagawang mga innovation to adapt and mitigate climate change. Meron silang um, quarterly mangrove planting. Ang uh-huh. dami nilang adaptation measures na ginagawa in their own communities. And um, yun lang siguro po, yung parang technical know-how of on how to do it properly para walang masyadong mortality, mortality rate. Uh-huh. Kasi yun na yung parang survival skill nila na ginagawa. Pero kulang pa dun sa knowledge and technical know-how po. Uh-huh. Meron naman pong na-convert. Siguro, kulang lang po sa information pa din po. That is so why marami, I really... Yes po, yes po, sir. Ma- ma- so maraming realizations, ano? And as you as you said, na na uh, napansin na, ay, yung dagat pala ay malapit na sa oh. mga kamakayan natin. Parang slow onset effects, no? Um, what made you um, more inspired? And what made you still uh, stand up? and move on and go on with your life and oh. what inspired you to not give up my family po my my nieces and nephew i really love them as my own kasi um especially my nephew po wala po kasi kami um i lost seven brothers and he is the only man aside from my father in the family and mm-hmm. at that point hindi ko hindi ko gusto talaga na Uh, may experience nila yung na experience naman at ako din po I have been praying to I have so many dreams in my lifetime palagi ko nga pong sinasabi yun. and I want to reach those dreams at hindi ko may reach yung dreams na yon kung five years from now eight years from now I'm still surviving and fighting super typhoons or any climatic disaster siguro um the thinking na gusto ko ng ganitong future na maahon ko ang pamilya ko um, sa kahirapan. Yun yung nagiging inspiration ko na hindi ko maabot yung mga dreams ko kung palagi kaming sinasagasa ng typhoon at dinidestroy lahat kung anong meron kami. Kaya, um, yun po talaga yung nag-inspire sa akin. Kasi par- our future is really worth fighting for. And I really believe na kung meron kang ginagawa for, for the environment, you're not just doing that for yourself yourself or your family. You're also doing that for a lot of people in vulnerable countries kasi connected tayong lahat. At kung ano yung binibigay mo sa, sa environment, babalik sa iyo at babalik sa community yan. Sa so, tingin mo ba, ano, Marinel, uh, Uh, may pag-asa pa ba tayo? Meron pa bang hope? At uh, ano kaya ang pwedeng magawa lalo pa ng mga kabataan? Kasi uh, at, the, at the rate we're have doing, meron pang pag-asa na talagang magkaroon ng, ng drastic change para mas mapigilan ang matitinding epekto ng climate change. Yes. Um, whenever I I am asked if uh, hopeful pa ba tayo, should we remain mm. hopeful? I always say we don't have any choice but to remain hopeful kasi uh, hindi naman natin susukuan lang ang ang earth, ang ating environment. So we mm. really have to keep the hope in our hearts and I really think na kung magkakaroon lang ng will ang ating leaders to really make change happen kasi sila yung may resources, may authority, and may power to really make a systemic change. Mas, kaya nga po, we always have to parang as much as possible partner and work with the government kasi nga sila yung may resource, yung may authority, and yung may power. Um, sana lang, I always pray that they will have the political will to really um, put the climate action in the priority. Kasi hindi na lang siya dapat... <coughs> na natatapos sa COP or sa kahit na anong oh. climate negotiation. Dapat oh. din, we implement those plans on the grassroots. Kasi sa grassroots talaga po, ang dami ng innovation. And I always say this as a community organizer. You don't go there to the communities to say, ito yung gawin mo. Ito yung gawin nyo. Kasi ito yung, ito yung dapat yung gawin in your community. You should go there to the community to learn from them. To support the existing initiatives of the people. Kasi sila yung gumawa nun. They have oh. the sense of ownership for it. And they will... 
the things na na initiate nila kasi sa kanila yun. And I okay. really believe na mas kailangan po magkaroon ng ng strong partnership with the grassroots and the, yes, grassroots organizations po. Mm. Yung mga kabataan. Gusto ko lang marinig kayo. Paano uh, sa yung experience ngayon? Gaano na karaming kabataan ang uh, masabi nating mas uh, mulat na? At kung hindi pa sila mulat, how would you encourage them to to uh, protect their common home? Kasi future nila, future ninyo ito pinag-usapan natin, no? Uh, it's really for you and the next generations. I think ang dami na pong mulat, no? And I'm very, very surprised then how dedicated our um, our youth are. Kahit ngayon, yung mga junior namin, na-amaze kami na parang ang dami na nilang alam. And they're really yeah. researching for it. And they really know na kung ano yung mga social issues, which is proud naman po ako. Nung nag, nag, nag-organize po kami sa Tacloban, ang dami pong youth na nag-PPM sa amin kung na gusto nila mag-volunteer on their own without yeah. inviting them. And that only means na hindi lang natututo sila sa school about climate change. Natututo din sila outside. Ano yung mga kailangan gawin, um, hindi, lang nang, hindi lang natatapos sa community cleanup and coastal cleanup yung mga gusto nilang um, salihan. Gusto din mm. nilang sumali sa mga um, organizing conferences. Also, um, tree growing and a lot of lobbying um, lab- lobbying events na ginagawa din namin with our city government unit. Tapos, na-amaze lang po ako na parang nung mga panahon po namin, nung high school po ako, if hindi po ako um, inoferan na para it rain at, uh, at mm. going youth child leader, siguro hindi din po ako andito kasi walang masyadong ganong opportunity at wala kaming access to that kind of, of, of information before. And our mm. youth now are very, very lucky then to have that kind of access na din. And I can say po, in my own um, experience, na ang dami na pong kabataan mm. yun, ang nakikibaka para i-reclaim ang aming karapatan sa sa safe na future kasi importante po talaga na mamulat yung mga yung mga kabataan kasi sabi ng mo nga po it is our future that is at stake at yun din po yung palagi kong sinasabi na ayo nating lahat na parang five years from now hindi natin naaabot yung mga pangarap natin kasi busy pa rin tayo sa pag um, pag survive ng ng climate disasters and i would say to those people who are to those young people who are still doubting kung gusto ba nila kasi may mga youth pa din na parang ina-exclude nila yung sarili nila kasi feeling nila hindi naman kami climate activist eh hindi naman kami environmentalist eh so bakit kami um, gagawa ng ganyang action climate change concerns us all and everybody we should do we should really do something collectively we should do climate action all of us kasi kailangan lahat tayo uh, maapektuhan hindi naman siya yung typhoon hindi naman siya namimili eh hindi siya namimili kung sino yung tatamaan niya or ganun po so um i really i always say na taking climate action it doesn't have to be grand It doesn't have to be something big agad. You can always start with yourself, with your family, and with your community. And if you have the passion um, for it, just do it um, in any way you can. Ang dami ng opportunities online. Ang dami ng pwede, ang daming mentors out there. If you're already in the advocacy field, ang daming mentors. We have Sir Rodney, we have you po. We have a lot of mentors po there who will um, support us and give us the right guidance. Okay. Um, siguro Rodney, uh, gustong tanongin din si, ano, si Marinette. What are you doing now? Ano yung iyong mga ginagawa ngayon? Na what do you do to encourage na pwede, pa rin, pwede rin sila uh, maging katulad mo? No? They can also, when they start something at, on their own, small things, no? eventually they can be also like you. And not like you as Marinel, but I think do the things that you're now doing because uh, kailangan dumami kayo eh. <laughs> Di ba? Okay. So can you tell tell us what are you uh, doing now? Ano yung iyong pinagkabalan ngayon? Ano yung saan na nakarating ang iyong advocacy? 
As of the moment po, um, as earlier um, shared by Sir Rodney po, I am the Advocacy Officer for Ecological Justice and Youth Engagement for Living Laudato si Philippines. And uh, we are currently implementing the ELCOI, which is, I'm very proud to say that we are already at our culminating days. <laughs> After ano three LCOI? months. Pati ano mo, El, what is ELCOI? ELCOI is a local conference of youth po. That is a localized COI. Um, COI conference of the youth is usually being held prior to COP. So this um, COI 16 will happen in Glasgow um, prior to COP then on to October 28 to 30. So before COI po, there are localized COI naman in every country that is um, to generate, parang to draft a national youth statement that will then be submitted to COI 16 and consequently to the COP26. So in COI16, we will um, form all of the youth statement that will be gathered from the ELCOI, from the youth statement coming from different countries. We will put it as one and we will call it global youth statement and then submit it to, to the COP26. So as of now, um, mm -hmm. we are already on our culminating days and we have drafted three regional statements from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. And we are mm -hmm. already um, finalizing mm -hmm. the national statement that will um, be the voice of the Filipino youth in the climate negotiations. So, will you invite uh, for your future na mga gathering, na mga youth, yung inyong mga uh, formation sessions or kung ano man yung mga conferences, can you invite yung mga youth natin to join? Yes po. Um, uh, please follow Living Laudato Si Po on Facebook and in Instagram and in LinkedIn. We have a lot of opportunities for you to be engaged in climate action. We have a lot of events that we always um, post for. You can register to them and you will know how you can um, how you can uh, Barang participate pa in climate advocacy and for Alcoy po, um, we will be we will be working with the local government units with our Alcoy delegates and we are hoping to get more support from other um, non delegates. Then, because Alcoy is not about the delegates lang naman, they are just representatives of the youth in their own region. So we need more voices in each region to really be present in working with the local government unit. Marinel, uh, go, go back, name. no? So, uh, kita lo, no? Di ba, pumula tayo ng uh, COP25 sa Madrid. And uh, uh, Marinel will also be going back again sa conference of uh, parties sa Glasgow. Uh, 26 sa Glasgow. And medyo nahirapan nga ang Global South ng mga uh, countries na nasa red list ng United Kingdom. But, uh, of course, uh, I believe uh, push, na, push na talaga na pupunta ka doon. Uh, ano yung mensahe yung ilalatag mo ulit doon sa mga iba't ibang mga uh, parties o mga countries o mga states na alam naman natin sila yung mga naging dahilan kung bakit nagkaganito tayo. Ano yung nadalhin mong mensahe uh, in behalf of the young people and ano bibigay mo sa akin sasabihin sa kanila doon sa mga countries sa nandun? Siguro my main message, uh, sir, is uh, I, I was always thinking na um, we always have to value our lives and other people's lives. And those leaders, uh, whenever I am given given an, uh, an speaking opportunity, po, I always say na you are leaders in your own countries. But behind that, you are also fathers, mothers, you are brothers and sisters. And you have a little child or young generation at your household. Okay. Think of their future. Because... Um, I am not here as a climate statistic. I am. I have been tired of being invited to big conferences and say a sad story, but I'm not even part of the decision-making processes. And how am I sure that my story, the the story of my community, is being considered in the negotiating table? Because those stories from the ground should be a motivation for you to really prioritize climate action because we have to value lives again. And siguro my main message when I go to COP is to really represent the, the um, communities because not everyone will have the opportunity to go to COP26 this year. And that is very counterproductive to what they have been calling an inclusive and equitable COP because we cannot have an inclusive and equitable COP if representations, if those representatives from different sectors and even from the global south will not be there to raise their, um, to raise their key messages. Because 
it is very important then na magkaroon sila ng ng spot doon para mapakinggan ko ano yung kailangan nilang gawin. So I am not there as like um maybe country coordinator for COI-16. I want to be there as someone coming from a vulnerable countries country um na nabear na yung brand ng climate change kasi kailangan natin then ilatag yun kasi ayaw natin ng cop output na domina- dominantly um from a green uh, from a global north um perspective so yun po <laughs> um, okay, basically okay. yun po yung nasa um uh, isip ko na importante po talaga na we we raise this uh, issues na meron tayo kasi yun nga siguro um I would say then po na kung hindi ko kung yung COP26 naman is yung if yung output ng COP26 naman is dominantly produced lang ng global north siguro wag na lang mag COP26 pero po kung magpo-push through man ang COP26 at and I am given the opportunity to go and to represent the Philippines or the Philippines my commu- to represent my community then it will be a disgrace for hindi ako pupunta and to raise um the issues that we have kasi um binigyan ka na po ng opportunity and you just have to maximize it it's to maximize it to make sure na yung mga issues that you have in the community are being heard in the international platform Okay, that's nice, no? So, ayan, Rodney, yun ang kanyang, ano, which is, uh, I agree na kailangan maramdaman ng nasa mga highly industrialized and, uh, and uh, tawag nito, developed countries, yung nararamdaman ng global south o yung mga underdeveloped and developing countries, no? Na alam natin lahat, palaging, uh, palaging itong, ano, parang, naging mukhang saling pusa lang no though we are not the, the 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 ones causing the climate change igaano lang naman yung ating contribution and yet the impact tayo sa, uh, sa impact tayo yung uh, napaka vulnerable no now um marinel so yung yung itong ano na to itong uh, advocacy mo i'm sure it has its uh, and also um, inspiration coming from Laudato Si, am I right? No, uh, I know you get to meet uh, yes, Pope Francis. No, you got to meet Pope Francis in uh, one of your, uh, ano sa Europe. So ngayon, um, how can you encourage now our young people to read and reflect on Laudato Si and inspire them to act for the protection of their future. So for well, yun nga po yung palagi ko din sinasabi. Law that is in the law that is ko. It it parang ask us lang to go back to simpler living. To go back to um parang to a way na hindi siya materialistic na living. Kasi we have to be um we have to be satisfied then on on kay ano lang yung mga kailangan natin not really wanting for more and and i think that's really a great lesson then for our young generation to protect what we have already and to make sure that our resources are equitable kasi yun nga din yung palagi nating sinasabi na do not consume too much if you don't need it and siguro as as this generation, we have so much access na nga, we have so much resources na. And a lot of young people are entitled to have all of those um, all of those resources. Siguro, um, Laudato Si is teaching us to go back and to reflect ano ba yung mga sustainable ways that we're doing before and how sustainable it was. Though um, technologies are making our life easier, pero w- what is the cost for that what is the cost naman sa ating environment and with the access that you have now um young people you have the power to do something and you should never doubt your capacity to make a change now you you should never underestimate your power to make a change kasi kung iniisip mo na isa ka lang um, wala kang magagawa kasi isa ka lang think of those 8000 people people out there 
for also doing individually. And if we will put that together, we can make a big impact collectively. Uh, Mar Mariner, one last question for me, from me, no? Uh, how old are you now, if you won't mind? Uh, I just turned 24, po. I started okay, so... in Tanbu kasi when I was 13 at least. Uh, okay. or, yeah. So this speaks of it, no? You are representing the young people of our generation, of your or your generation, no? no? Uh, so of this age. And uh, we hope na talagang your example would really um, uh, encourage others to believe on themselves that they can do something whatever age they are, whatever situation they are as young people. So Rodney, uh, maybe we can uh, now um, uh, wrap up and um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, see how Laudato Si is really is really calling our young people. Yun nga, at uh, binabalikan ko yung sinabi ni Pope Francis sa Laudato's number 13, the young people demand change. But they are not only actually demanding change, they are acting on it uh, to have change. And it followed no, by another document in Pope Francis, in Christus Vivid, yung parang exhortation niya sa mga young people na sabi nga ni Pope Francis, ang mga kabataan ay kayo na yung ngayon. Uh, na humukubog ng inyong bukas and you're helping the elder generations to you know to address uh, this crisis so yeah it's not the young people are not only uh, our inspiration uh, the young people should be our collaborator co-worker and caring for our common home we learn from them and we share our experiences and they have the innovation the ideas they have the zeal and the vigor and the strength and together, I believe, uh, if we do it in an intergenerational way, we can actually solve this uh, existential crisis. Yeah, and so now uh, we thank Marinelle no, for generously sharing her time and her sharing her story. No? Kung baga, ang lahat na may kwento, marami pang kwento yan sa epekto ng, uh, ng uh, uh, typhoon Haiyan. At marami pang typhoon na nangyari after Haiyan no, or Yolanda na patuloy na nagpapaalam sa atin na climate change is here and we have climate emergency and now we are in code red. no We are in code red. Ibig sabihin, talagang bata, matanda, uh, we all have to work together and stop the most devastating impacts of climate change uh, na, na nangyayari ngayon. So, uh, yung kabataan natin ay may magagawa. At sila, sa kanila tayo hubog ng lakas para mapagpatuloy itong ating mga ginagawang pag-educate. Kaya, thank you very much, Marinel, no, for, your, for sharing your story. Uh, and uh, we hope that you would be inspiring others and more young people so, gusto ko marinig na yung mga young people talaga ang uh, kikilos because it is your your future that are at stake. No? Um, do kasalanan mga nakakatanda ang nangyayari ngayon. No? So, uh, gisingin nyo rin yung mga magulang nyo. Gisingin nyo yung mga nakakatanda. Kasi ang nangyayari ngayon ay meron itong, dahil, meron itong pinagmulan. So, with that, uh, itong ating pag-aaral sa Laudato Si ay patuloy at we're inviting everybody to please um, continue to support this uh, program, continue to, to share this program because we are in code red. We cannot wait any longer for everybody and everyone's action. Today, we are celebrating, we continue to celebrate the season of creation. Para sa Archdiocese of Manila, pang siyam na taon. Para sa Diocese of Imos, pang 12 na taon. At para sa iba ay kasi simula lang. Nevertheless, kailangan na po nating magmabilis. Urgency is the call of the time. No? At uh, tayo ay uh, may mga pamamaraan at we will be sharing to you in the future, in the next episodes ng mga konkretong action. Anong pwedeng gawin sa bahay? ng bawat pamilya, ng bawat tao, saan ka man naroroon para iyong contribution. Kasi sabi nga ni Marinel, hindi wag mong isipin mag-isa ka. Kasi kung marami tayong gumagawa ng mga malilit na bagay at maghugpong-hugpong yon, 
then it can have a massive impact. No? Kaya, Marinel, good luck sa iyong uh, Glasgow uh, uh, representation ng Kabataan at ng Pilipinas. And hopefully si Rodney can also join. Unfortunately, um, sana gawin nilang uh, online din yan, make it available online so that it can be, uh, no, no, it can be, it can reach uh, us, no, kung anong nangyayari doon. At uh, sana ay talagang magkakaroon na rin ng mangyayaring mabuti, no. Um, kasi yung COP21 ay may, may nangyaring maganda pero yung implementation no, yun still in question. Di ba Rodney? So, Okay, Rodney, say your uh, closing, uh, ano na, and then... Yeah, and uh, we, we thank Maribel, of course, and uh, uh, everyone of you. We hope that you learned something from this episode ng ating Laudato Si, Caring for a Common Home. At sa lahat ng mga katahanan, nawa ay pagpalain tayo araw-araw, at huwag kalimutan na dapat araw-araw, lagi nating tinitingnan yung ating mga bagay na ginagawa. Ito ba ay nakabubuti sa ating kalikasan? Ito ba ay nakabubuti sa ating kapwa-tao? Sabi nga ni Marinel, we need to go back uh, no, uh, to that very, very uh, principle na let's protect life. But not only your life, but also the lives of others and the lives of our uh, brothers, son and sister. Muna, ibig ko sabihin, yung mga ibang creatures. Sabi nga ni Pope Francis, let's take care of other living beings as well. And their habitats. Ano? And uh, uh, we hope to see you again uh, next uh, Sunday because we'll have a good topic to uh, to discuss. Uh, Tita Luna, yes. this will begin really within that very, very basic unit of our society. And uh, we hope that you'll stay with us. And uh, again, Magandang uh, gabi, magandang umaga, magandang tanghali, magandang hapon po sa lahat. Ako po si Rodney Galicia, mga katahanan mula sa Living Now Dato si Philippines. Nagkasabi sa inyo na, let's live our life the Laudato si Way. Okay, so thank you. Ito rin po si uh, Atilo Arsenio ng uh, Archdiocese of Manila Minister of Ecology na patuloy po sa ating paglilingkod at panarawagan sa inyo. Please subscribe. O oh, mayroon na tayong 220,000 subscribers. Dapat gawing million yan. Ang dami-dami katoliko, di ba? So, uh, please subscribe, like, okay? And give your comment. Kung may mga comments po kayo, no? At may katanungan kayo, mayroon kayong recommendations. As, uh, let us know kung ano yung inyong uh, uh, mga uh, gustong iparating sa amin. And we'll be glad, we'll be glad to, to respond to them, okay? So, uh, makakalikasang uh, pagbati muli. Laudato si Miss Inyore on Care for Our Common Home. <music>